Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images. I'm going to have a look at a subject I get asked about quite often. In particular, somebody asked me this morning a question about it. It's about printer gamut. What does it mean? What does it matter? And should you be worried about expressions of some printer has a larger gamut than another? Does it really make a difference? What really matters with regards to print quality? Now, the question I was asked this morning was partly driven, I think, from a marketing aspect where you see that sometimes printers are marketed as having a bigger gamut than another one. Now, does that really matter or is there more to it than that? Remember that quite a lot of stuff like this you'll see is marketing driven. So if you see diagrams like this, um, now this is from when I'm making paper profiles. Um, it tells you something, but it doesn't tell you that much on its own unless you understand the context and know why it's there. So it's very easy to get the idea that, you know, printer A has a gamut of such and such, printer B has a gamut of something different, printer B's gamut is bigger than printer A, therefore printer B is better. Um, there is no such thing. There's far more to it than that. Um, as a quick example of it, I've got two printers here that I've tested recently. And this is the Epson 2850. It's a four color printer. So it has black, has cyan, magenta, and yellow inks in it. Now, this printer down here is an Epson ET8500. That has two blacks in it. Well, it has a dye black and it has a pigment black. They work differently on different papers, but essentially that's the black. Then we've got the colors, the standard CMY colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and we've got a gray. Now, some people will say, ah, oh, the grey must be for better black and white performance. Not in this instance, it isn't. It may contribute to it, but unlikely. If you've got multiple greys, then yes, that will. But that's a much higher end printer than we've got here. Now, I've also got sitting here just off shot, I've got uh, an Epson P5000 that has got lots of inks in it. That's all pigment ink that has multiple grays, but there's a setup issue with that, which relates to printer gamut and proofing. Now, I'll mention that in a bit, but first let's, let's have a think about these two printers here. The, they've still got, all got the cyan magenta yellow inks. They express, along with the black, they express the gamut that this printer is capable of. Well, almost. They express the gamut range of colors that this printer is capable of on a particular media. So the media differences are different to start with. So if I print on this printer, which is you know, a much less capable from a photo printing point of view printer um, than this one here, if I print on this on a glossy paper compared to this one on which is in all ways that I could realistically consider a better printer. If I print on matte art paper on this, the image will have a smaller gamut than I'm getting on a glossy paper than this. Does this mean this is worse? Of course not, of course it doesn't. Um, it's just that if you think about printer gamut, you have to think of the paper as well, because there's a combination. It's also, and as I mentioned this, this little diagram here, um, it's also about when you make the profiles, because when you create printer profiles or use printer profiles from Epson or paper makers, those pr profiles can define the gamut that you're getting from a particular paper for a particular printer. So it's about profiling as well. So you see, we're already moving away from the idea that a printer has a particular gamut. It shows a particular gamut on a particular paper depending on the profiling that you've done. Or if you use just direct printing through the driver, it's based on the equivalent to profiling that's going on inside the driver that's been done by the manufacturer when they wrote the driver and when they developed the printer. It's all part of that together. So we've got two printers here, which on the face of it, I can make an argument that this one can show a greater gamut than this. Doesn't really matter. I mentioned the P5000, much bigger here. Now, the P5000, when you set it up, you get a choice between including a light black ink, or light light black ink, or a violet ink. Now, if you choose the violet, 
you get a larger gamut because it's adding extra colors and those colors they expand the shape here you'll see it in marketing materials and things you'll see loads of things about gamuts and stuff like that which all add to that image that a better gamut is that bigger gamut is better why when i set up the p5000 would i want to use the like, like black ink well first of all I use this printer for its pigment inks and I use it for black and white printing. So having several greys in that instance makes a difference for black and white printing. However, those greys are also mixed with the colours to give a smoother interior of the gamut. Remember this, these, this here, is a, this is the extremes of colour that you can produce. Very few real life images will touch this extreme very often. Doesn't mean you can't produce images that won't have a very large color gamut and you'll need to take care in printing them. But I'm more concerned in terms of photographic quality, certainly for either these, these big prints up on the wall here when I was making them, I was more concerned about smoothness of gradients, lack of banding, transitions between colors. Now those are as much about profiling as they are the ink set itself, because remember, they're all put together as a combination. So having a slightly larger gamut by choosing the violet ink on this means that if I'm doing commercial proofing, where I'm simulating a press or something like that, printing press or print, you know, commercial print setup, I want that range of colors. In particular, if I'm using uh, this particular printer for proofing, which is probably its biggest sales area is, is proofing, I want to be able to show all those strong colors that I can get from a commercial printing press. Now, commercial printing press is not producing photographic images. So the aspects of smoothness, transitions and things are not quite as important in that. It's much more important from a printer like this to be able to reproduce specific Pantone colors because I'm producing hard proofs of a potential run on a printer, on a big printing press. Much easier to produce proofs on this and check them than it is to run stuff on a big commercial printing press. Much, much cheaper, much quicker. So this comes in two modes. It has a proofing mode where you have the violet ink, which gives you the expanded gamut or it has the extra gray. And people look at this and when they set it up, and you have to make the choice when you set this printer up, it's the same for the P7000, P9000. You have to make the choice as to whether you want the larger gamut or whether you want the grays. Now, a lot of people still go for the violet, even though they're gonna be printing photos. You don't need it, it doesn't make that much difference. And in fact, Epson in their setup details say, if you want to use this printer for printing photos and artwork, the best setting is to use that extra gray because that will give finer gradations. It also helps in neutrality of grays, but all of those. So I'm deliberately setting up this printer and this is a high-end printer, several times the price of either of these. Much bigger, much more capable, roll paper, all kinds of things like that. I'm deliberately setting up this printer over here with a smaller gamut. The person this morning asked me the question, they said, well, surely having the bigger gamut makes it a more accurate printer. Isn't that better? Well, it depends on what you choose to mean by accurate. If I'm doing contract proofing and I'm proofing a you know, commercial print on this, accuracy is very important to me. And that comes in with profiling as it does with photo stuff. So I'm keen to get those spot colors. I'm keen to be able to reproduce the Pantone range of colors, which is just the, you know, the standard stuff you come across in commercial printing. People ask, well, can it reproduce all the range of Pantone colors? This one is closer to it if it's got the violet installed. As an aside, because this one has two blink, uh, blue black, it, two black inks and you have to swap over, you don't get a choice with this. The Epson P900 and P700 have gone for the violet ink. Now, does that mean that that's worse than this? Not really, because the ink set is different. And that's the other thing you have to remember is that every printer that has a slightly different ink set in it has a slightly different color. 
uh, in the colour inks. Um, there are also variations in the greys and other things as well, but the colour inks. So sure, you might see somebody say, ah, oh, well, this particular printer here that they're looking at has a grey and it has a red ink as well. Well, that must make it a lot better. Well, it may reproduce some reds slightly better, but in a way that is to allow other mixes of colours. The, the cyan, magenta and yellow aren't always the same. Adding in a red and a grey, the grey allows you to use stronger primary colours or your, your main coloured inks and blend them in. So there's that. So that's a grey purpose here. It's just to go for smoothness. There is nothing inherently better about the choice of having um, cyan, magenta, yellow, light cyan, light magenta or having cyan, magenta, yellow and grey. It all depends how the ink drops are laid on the paper. And you can't assume anything just from the mix of, of colours in the, in the setup. So you've got the question of you know, accuracy. Well, it depends on really what you mean. I prefer a great looking print to necessarily a completely accurate print. Surely the best print is going to be the most accurate print. Well, you're producing a print which is an impression of something that you're seeing on a screen anyway. It's going to be different. You can never truly match screen and print. So it doesn't really matter that much if you're producing good looking prints. And the interesting thing I've noticed is that almost every printer that I've tested in the last few years, I can, with good profiles, produce excellent looking prints on some media. Now, some printers are more flexible. They allow a wider range of media. Some give better results on some sorts of media. Some don't. So, for example, this one here, the ET8500 and 8550, these produce great prints on glossy paper, luster paper. Art papers work very well on art papers because if you use the Velvet Fine Art setting, you can have the matte black in use and that gives deeper blacks on those papers. So it gives very nice looking prints. The slightly, and it is only slightly, weaker area of this particular printer comes from, and the 8550 as well, comes about on perhaps brighter papers. Now, brighter papers, such as these ones, these big prints here, are what I would often choose to use on the P5000 here. It works very well with them. The little 4-ink 2850 here. Well, have a look at the review if you're curious about it. But obviously, with just the 4-inks, you're going to be a little limited. This one shows its limitations if you try and print colour prints on glossy papers. It's only in that instance using the three inks, the cyan, magenta and the yellow. And that really leaves a bit to be desired. Doesn't mean you can't make acceptable prints of this, photo prints. Uh, many people would not notice the difference. But if you like me and notice the difference, and I'm going to assume that if you're watching something like this, that includes you as well, then this is not a printer you would choose for photo printing. It's not marketed at that. It's an all-in-one home office style printer that happens to do photos as well. It can do them. If you want to print photos, have a look at this. Or I've got coming later this week, um, these are going back to Epson and I've got the new Epson 18100 ET18100 um, and that one has a different ink set again. That one has what I would call a more conventional ink set. It has black, but cyan, magenta, yellow, and it has light cyan and light magenta. Now, somebody said, oh, well, yeah, it's not going to be as good as this. Or yeah. I've seen all kinds of suppositions from people. Um, I would test it and have a look. And I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll do a video when it's here so you know what's what on it. But I don't expect it to make much difference. I expect it to produce very good photo prints because that's what it's for. Um, there is at this level no inherent advantage in choosing a particular range of colours. You might, for some media, want the all pigment inks of this, but I can produce great looking, really glossy prints, colour prints on this one. So, yeah, it, it's a matter of what you need. Now, that bit about gamut again, just to sort of go back onto that. It's not 
an aspect that I consider when I'm looking at print quality. Now, there's lots of things I look at in print quality, but as I mentioned, I'm looking for smoothness, gradients, smooth tonal changes, and transitions between colors. Now, a lot of those, are, as I said, are a combination between what goes on in the driver and the profile. So there is far more to it. Uh, one of the things that one of my pet dislikes is when I see reviews, particularly of papers and the like, that include gamut volumes um, for an arbitrary paper. They might also include colour accuracy. Well, what are these gamut volumes actually measuring? They're giving you a general idea of how colourful images you could get if you printed really colourful images that push the envelope of the gamut, the range of colours that could be done. Would anyone notice a difference? Probably not. What about, so we've got you know, gamut, what about colour accuracy? Well, that's as much anything as to do with your profiling and the printer driver. Um, to say that I use a particular paper and it has very poor colour accuracy, I would not blame the paper. I'd say I've got something wrong in profiling. I've got something wrong in the media settings for the printer. I've got something wrong in the choice of paper for the particular types of inks that are being used. To say that a paper is, a, is more accurate than another one or a print, the moment you get these numbers, take them with a very big pinch of salt. If you see things like gamma volume and charts with percentages and things, remember the big thing, and this is why I don't include this stuff in my reviews. Lots of data does not equate with lots of information. They are different things. Data can be useful when coupled with understanding to get useful information out of it. Just putting a pile of charts and data on the screen, and I, I do a few of them because I know people like to see some of this stuff, but to do much of this sort of stuff, you're really just going, hey, look at all the numbers. Never mind the print quality, look at the numbers. Well, for me, I do look at the numbers, but when I'm actually showing something to somebody and said, yeah, this is a great printer, what do I do? I take a print out and show somebody an actual print because, yep, I know some people like to see the numbers. Well, you know, perhaps if you are one of those people who absolutely wants to see the numbers, you probably won't appreciate my approach to this that much, but I'm gonna say, learn to ignore the numbers sometimes and concentrate on the prints you actually get. So, hope that's of some help. Uh, some interest. Please do ask questions, as I say, because it's people's questions that sort of give me ideas for quick videos like this. So uh, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. It's always appreciated and bye.